Hello, welcome back. Today we'll be going through how you can make it through the last month of the academic year, whether you are in university or high school. I hope some of these tips can help you out. The last few months of the term can arguably be the most difficult and it's natural to have feelings of tiredness, laziness, stress, anxiety, and a feeling like you just kind of want everything to just finish off so you can get on with the holidays. I'll be going through almost like a step-by-step -step process, a process that I actually used a couple of weeks ago to kind of help me realize that I've actually got time, I can actually get organized and I can actually be a lot more effective and get a lot more things done during the day with a lot less stress and a lot less anxiety. It's a process that worked really well for me, especially when I'm working on projects that require a lot of time and for me to organize myself effectively. So hopefully these things work for you as well. Now, the first thing to do is, is to make time by realizing that you have time. Very often we feel overwhelmed, stressed out and anxious because we feel like we have so many things to do and so little time to do it. You've got teachers that are trying to finish off the content, you've got exams that are around the corner, you've got the difficulty of the subject and all this kind of contributes to the feeling like you don't have enough time to deal with everything. So how do you make more time? Everyone's got 24 hours in a day, so how do you actually find that you actually have more time than you think you do? Have a look at your screen time on your phone. You realize that you actually spend a lot of hours on your phone unnecessarily. Before I did this whole process, I was clocking like four hours a day on my phone and most of that was spent on social media. What you'll realize is if you spend a bit of time looking at where you are actually spending your time on your phone, it's probably on things that are not helping you be productive at all. It's probably things like social media, games, and we justify it by saying, this is how I relax. When in fact, this is just how we procrastinate. And the chances are you could probably consciously shave off anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour every single day. To put this in perspective for you, if you shaved off an hour every single day for the next month, you'd have 30 hours that you could dedicate to study, to something else that's more meaningful, more productive than you just scrolling through TikTok. We wish we had that time turner that Hermione had, but unfortunately we are in the non-wizarding world. Okay, so now that you realize that you have more time than you think, now's the time to organize yourself effectively so you can put your new realized more time to use. So naturally, the next step is to plan out your week, your month. What I love to do on Sunday is I kind of do like a whole brain dump in the morning where everything that's like up in the air that I kind of don't know, but I know I have to do this week, I tend to just chuck it all on like into Notion in the inbox section. And then I'll organize my week according to all the things that I have to get done every day. And for you, it may be things like an English practice exam. It may be to spend a bit more time in this area where you struggle in to get a bit of advice from this teacher to do another practice exam over here. You may have all these things that you've got all up in your head, but if you organize it effectively, every single day for that week or for that month, then it's like kind of not in here anymore. And this brain is not overreactive. It's not thinking, overthinking things too much. And it doesn't look like it's a whole bunch of things that you have to do. Because once it's all out on paper or in an app, you can then look at it from like a holistic perspective and see how can you organize your week, your month, so you don't get stressed out, anxious, concerned that you don't have enough time and you're practically managing everything quite well. Also on that note, make sure that you plan time to chill out, relax, watch movies, just kick back. Because I feel like personally for me, if I look at something that's literally just work related, it's not as exciting. Because I believe like when I was in high school, if I just looked at a whole week or a whole month planned of, you know, exams, essays, you know, studying this, studying that, meetings here, meetings there, then I would get really, really annoyed and not excited at all. Whereas if I was organizing things that I actually enjoyed as well, like, you know, a Friday night movie or, you know, a Saturday morning run, whatever it is, then I can actually get excited and look forward to the week ahead and to what's coming on the Friday and the Saturday and can actually get me through the whole week and make sure that I am productive. So that Friday night movie or that, you know, that Saturday, Saturday morning sleep in can act as a reward. Okay, so now you've made time and you've organized yourself effectively enough so you know what you're doing pretty much, you know, the next following days. Not in too much detail, but you know what you're doing. The third step is to write your to-do list in great detail, you know, the morning of each day that comes. And the best way to write your to-do list is to break it down to like literally the most minute task 
possible. Now this may seem like a really simple and not that exciting technique, but it is incredible. What it's effectively doing is, it's psychologically tricking yourself into thinking that the task is a lot more manageable and generally it actually is. It's a lot more inviting to do smaller tasks than to look at really big ones because really big tasks can seem very, very intimidating for us. But if we break it down, we make the mountain all of a sudden look like just small little hills that we got to climb. So it's a lot more effective like that. Now the last thing to do is, is to actually get motivated. This is something that's tough. Like it's not easy to do because generally when we're studying, it's not stuff that we really enjoy. Sometimes it is, but you know, sometimes it's not. And so how can we actually stay motivated to start the task, to continue it and to actually finish it off? And the answer to that is remembering why you're doing it in the first place. If you want motivation and drive and discipline, then you're gonna to have to remember why is it the case that you want these marks? Why is it that you just want this year to finish off, right? And your why could be as simple as the holidays are around the corner, so I might as well just give this my best shot. Or it could be a little bit more complex. It could be like, you know, there's a certain lifestyle that I wanna live, so I wanna get really good marks, so I have, you know, a good chance of doing that. Or it could even be the fact that your parents moved from another country to the country that you're currently living in now so that you could have the best opportunity, the best lifestyle, the best chance at being successful. And you wanna make the most of that. And you wanna show them that you're thankful by giving your education or whatever it is, a 110% of your effort. And it could also be that your future self in three, four, five years time will thank you for it. Your why is incredibly important. Now, I'm not saying that it's gonna be the answer to everything. Just because you have a why, and even if it is strong, it doesn't mean that you're gonna be motivated 24 seven. That's, that's never the case. Or in fact, being motivated all the time, I find to be quite exhausting, but I know I can work hard and I know I can be disciplined when I know what's the reason behind me putting in effort. And hopefully you find that for yourself as well. And if it's not a reason that's strong enough, find another one. When you find one that like connects with you, that you feel like, yes, this is something that I want to achieve. This is the reason why I do what I do. And if you can really connect with that, you'll just try hard and you'll put an effort because you know what it is that you're working for. And on that note as well, you're not constantly thinking about it 24 seven. You're not thinking about it before you start your work, during it, and when you're trying to finish off your work. So what I'd highly recommend is you write it down somewhere and you have it sticking up where you're gonna see it often. Maybe, you know, it's on your bathroom mirror, maybe, it's you know your desktop background. Maybe it's you know inside your wardrobe when you open it up in the morning. That's the first thing that you see. When it's constantly in your face and you're constantly being reminded of why you want to put an effort. So that, my friends, is pretty much the whole process. One, make time by realizing that you do have time. Two, reduce the feeling of being overwhelmed by organizing yourself and making effective to-do lists. And the third thing is is to constantly remind yourself why you are doing it. This is going to give you the encouragement to start and finish off whatever task it is that you're doing. If you wanna find out how you can be more productive, click this video over here. If you wanna find out how you can build your self-confidence over here, and please make sure that you do subscribe to this channel right there because I'll be making more videos. I hope you guys have an incredible day, night, wherever it is that you are in the world, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.